Responsive design in Adobe Muse represents the biggest, most significant change in the history of the application. This feature allows you to easily create truly unique designs that look beautiful on any size screen. Now, everything you've loved about Muse in the past, freeform visual design with no coding required, still remains true. Let's take a look at this feature in action. Now, I'm looking at a site that I've built in older versions of Muse, and it's what's known as a fixed layout. So you'll notice as I come into my page design here and just press and drag the edge of the web browser, as I drag over, nothing is resizing. It's all fixed in its content. I'd like to change that. So let's go ahead and close that out and switch over into Muse. And here within the application, let's double click on the master page. Now, if you're familiar with Muse in the past, the first thing you'll notice is I have something known as a breakpoint bar at the top of the page. Now, if I right click on that breakpoint bar to bring up the breakpoint properties, I'll see that the site is defined as fixed in width because this is an older document and in opening the new application, that's my default behavior. I'm going to come and change that to fluid width and click OK. Now, what that is going to do by default is allow this breakpoint to have fluid objects. Well, now that I've done that, I do want the objects to be fluid, but some of them I'm going to want to move in different ways. So let's just start to click through each of these objects and define it. I'm going to click on the pigeon, and in the control strip, in addition to the pinning menu that we've had in the past, we now have responsive pinning and resizing. So for that pigeon logo, I'm going to have it pinned to the left side of the browser. This will allow it to scroll vertically as I uh, move up and down on the page. Under the resize dropdown, I'm going to leave that at none. I don't want it to scale as my page scales. I want it to be uh, locked in essence or fixed. My navigation, same behavior, except I'm going to pin it to the right side of the browser. My pre-order button, I'll do that on the right side. Lower navigation, of course, I'm going to do that to the left. And then my contact form here, I'll pin that to the right. And all of these objects, as I mentioned, are not resizing. They're all locked in height and width. Now, I've got some logos here. I don't mind if these logos actually scale proportionately as the width of the breakpoint scales. So I'll select those objects. I'm going to leave the pinning alone for now. But in the resize dropdown, I'm going to select responsive width and height. Now, without doing anything else, let's take a quick look at the behavior that I've created in the browser. So for that, I'm going to pull down on File to preview the page in the browser. Let's take a look at these elements. You'll notice that I have a page de design here that starts at 1,200 pixels in width. Now, by design, I don't want it to grow to be 100% width of the browser for this particular design. So as I drag to anything larger than 1,200, it's going to pretty much do nothing, no changes from what you've seen before. But as I hit that breakpoint, watch what happens. Objects start to resize to the width of the browser. Now, as I mentioned, the way Muse looks at breakpoints is when your design breaks, you need to add a new breakpoint. So if you look at my footer here, my contact form is starting to bump into the footer. That's going to be the first time that I'm going to want to come in and define an additional breakpoint. So let's go back into the application. And I can simulate that fluid behavior right here in the design canvas by pressing and dragging a gripper here on the right-hand side. So as I press and drag, I can start to see how my design is changing. Notice my logos are scaling there in that little orange area. My contact form's getting a little close to my navigation. So I'm going to get right to the point where I'm comfortable with that layout. And I want to now come in and add another breakpoint. To do that in the breakpoint bar, I just click on that little plus symbol. And there you go, I've added a second breakpoint. Now, I can adjust any of the elements within this breakpoint. My footer rose up a little bit there. I pretty much like the design just fine. But what I want to do for anything smaller is actually select these two elements. And let's just stack them on top of each other. And I'll align them so that they're centered. I no longer really want them pinned to the left or the right. So I'm going to make sure I turn off any pinning that I've defined. And I'll center it there. Let's come in and I'll select each of these guys and turn off that pin so that they just remain centered in the design. 
And once again, the beauty of Muse is you can instantly see the work that you've done. I'm going to come in and preview in the browser. Let's start at that larger size. So here we go. As I press and drag, things start to move. I get very close to having my nav bump together there in the footer, and it jumps to that next breakpoint. Well, this is great. That's exactly what I want. The next thing I want to do is start thinking in terms of touch devices like tablets and uh, phones. So for that, I know that there's a pretty good range for tablets, and that's 768. Rather than dragging to that position, I can also click on that breakpoint bar and just select Add Breakpoint. And I can type in that value, 768, and I'll click Return. Now I can see here in the breakpoint bar, I have the 768 size. I can always click back to my larger designs just to compare them to one another. But here within that 768 space, I'm starting to think in terms of tablets. Now tablets tend to be devices that you're navigating with your finger. So the navigation for tablets should be different than what I'm using on a desktop device. I'd like to introduce something known as a hamburger menu or an accordion that has a drop down area with larger navigation. Now to save time, I've already designed this accordion widget. I pulled it out of the widget library and selected accordion here. And I designed some attributes that as I paste this back onto the canvas, you can see. So what happens is if you click on that accordion, it expands out and I have some navigation that's here. I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit larger just to make that easier for your finger to use to navigate. And I now like to swap that out from the primary nav that I have here. An amazing feature that you have as a visual designer with Muse is you can, between breakpoints, hide and show any design elements you'd like. Let's say I'm designing for a phone and I have a desktop design. In that smaller breakpoint, I can very easily turn off design elements I no longer want and then replace them with other elements that I have visibility for. So what I want to do real quickly here is select the navigation and this background bar. So I shift select the two and I'm going to go to my right mouse menu and select hide for breakpoint. I don't want them in this breakpoint. I'll select this accordion and let's just go ahead and make sure that I send it to the back. So I'm going to arrange it to the back and press and drag that up into place behind my other design elements. All right, I have a nice little tricky little accordion menu there with larger navigation. Now in the accordion, I set one little tricky bit here, which says that it can close all and that it's not going to overlap the items below. That's going to cause the push behavior to push my content out of the way. Now I showed that up on this layout, but if I jump back to my other layouts, it's important that I make sure to hide that for these other larger breakpoints so they don't get in my way. Go ahead and hide it here as well. All right, let's start to see what we've done in context of our active page content. What I'll do is jump back to my site plan and let's double click on an individual page. Now what we've just done is created breakpoints on our master page. I now can choose which of those breakpoints I want to apply to the individual page design. I've been working on this page design and I've gone in and defined some of the responsive features I've shown you on the master. Let's carry over the breakpoints now to add to that design. You'll notice in the breakpoint bar, I now have some triangles. Now these triangles are indicating that the master page that is applied to this page design has breakpoints. If I want them to carry over, I can click on the triangle to jump to that location, then click the plus sign to drop a breakpoint to that position. I can toggle between those breakpoints now and see how it's affecting the design. If I want to, I can come in and make unique changes. I would probably resize these images or hide a few of them so they're not quite so small and tight in the design. One last area I want to focus on has to do with text in responsive design. As a visual designer, you're going to want to make sure that the content you're producing is always as legible as possible. And when you're looking at devices like a smartphone that's very small, you may want to change the way text appears to make it larger or give it more padding or spacing so that it's easily more legible for the viewer of that site. Muse supports unique typesetting attributes per breakpoint. 
If you look in the tool panel here in the very lower area, I have a toggle that allows me to control if any of the text attributes I'm defining are unique per breakpoint or across all breakpoints. And clicking that toggle will change that attribute. I'm going to leave it unique to each breakpoint. And if you notice back here in my desktop design, I have introducing Pigeon, and it's nice and wide, and it spans that, that browser nicely. When I jump to the tablet, it's got a break that I'm not really comfortable with. I can come in and select this text object and change the size. I can also place, play a little bit with the letting that I've defined until I get that nice long section of text again for that particular breakpoint. Now, the nicest part of this implementation is that although the text styling is unique across breakpoints, the actual words, the text can be common. Let's say I want to change this text now to say introducing the pigeon. I can make that change in my tablet design. When I switch over to desktop, it's applied that same change. So the text is common, but the text styling is unique per breakpoint. I've only begun to touch on some of the responsive feature set that we've added to the Muse application, yet I bet you would agree with me that this takes Muse to a whole new level of functionality. I encourage you to give it a try.